What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel today. Thanks for stopping by. Please bear with me as I still am dealing with a lot of allergies and head congestion, so I'm sorry if I sound really nasally. Hopefully it will be cleared up here the next day or two. But anyway, this review on Rogue is actually about a week, maybe even a week and a half late. Uh, I was planning on doing her when I got her out of the arena the second go around and managed to pull Psylocke, so that kind of threw everything into a loop. Uh, I did the Psylocke review. And then shortly after that, kind of the Batista's event dropped, which was not planned, so Rogue got pushed back again. But here we are finally. We are going to uh, walk through her ability list. I'll point out a few things, show you some gameplay, give you my opinion on her, and uh, hopefully kind of give you a better understanding of how you should be using Rogue. Uh, if you just pulled her out of the basic arena like I did, you haven't had a lot of time playing with her, so hopefully this will be a help to you. All right, before we do any of that, though, let's jump into the rank up, and I will pick up right after that's done. So when I finally finished the Bautista's event 100%, the Awakening Gem that I got from the Crystal for completing that was a Mutant, which it worked out perfectly as far as the timing goes for this video. Uh, Rogue is definitely a character that I would recommend that you awaken. She becomes a lot better uh, when she is awakened, and if, you, you know, if you've got your generic Awakening Gem still floating around trying to figure out who to use it on, you know, if you put it into her and you find that you hate playing with her as a character, or you're not very good with her for whatever reason, um, you know, your Awakening Gem was not uh, was not wasted because she still got really, really high prestige. Uh, so at the very least, you can help your Alliance out that way. So I, I don't know. I would recommend Awakening her. I, I think definitely if you're going to use her in Alliance Wars or something like that, uh, she's far better useful when she is Awakened. So I want to jump over into her Abilities list here. And uh, I will skip over the Signature Ability for now. I will come back to that until we cover the S1 and S2. So first up there is her passive ability, which she works um, very similar to uh, Groot, where she has the ability to reduce debuffs on her uh, significantly. Uh, it's not a chance to uh, shrug off debuffs like a Crossbones or an Agent Venom. It's just a flat reduction in all debuffs that she receives. So uh, stuns, power locks, weakness, uh, bleeds, poisons, all of those things, she reduces them by 70% of the time. So if you've got a bleed that lasts for 10 seconds, I, don't, I can't think of a bleed that lasts that long, but for example sake, if it lasts 10 seconds, she reduces that all the way down to 3 seconds. So not only are you locked up for less amount of time, but you actually take uh, far less damage from um, debuffs that do damage, like bleeds and poisons. So Rogue's S1 is really interesting. It's got a couple of different effects that it does. Uh, the first one, and I think probably the most confusing to a new character who hasn't played with her a lot, is that when you use the S1, it will replicate up to five buffs that the enemy has active. So let's say that the enemy is, I don't know, is Hulk. You use an S1, he's got a Fury buff active, you're going to steal that Fury buff. And then that starts a timer, and I think it's like, it's either two seconds, maybe two and a half seconds, it's not very long. But as long as you, um, every time you hit the enemy while you have that buff, it will reset that timer. And as soon as you evade back and that timer falls off, you lose the um, you lose the buff that you gain from the S1. So you know whether you are attacking the enemy directly or you are attacking into their block, as long as you're hitting them, it will continue to to reset that timer, refresh that timer, and you can keep the buff. The other thing that's kind of interesting about that is as long as you are holding that buff, the enemy cannot uh, also gain that buff again. That doesn't mean that they lose the buff. So, for instance, that same example, Hulk, if I steal his Fury effect, that doesn't mean that, or excuse me, if I replicate his Fury effect, that doesn't mean that I take it away from him. He will still have that Fury effect until it falls off. The problem is really, I mean, to keep those buffs for, you know, an extended amount of time, you have to be overly aggressive, uh, constantly hitting the enemy every couple of seconds. And that really just opens you up for so many issues. You know, if you're in a high pressure situation, the last thing you want to be doing it's really pushing yourself. Um, you know, you're, you want to be more laid back, evading things, blocking things. So, you know, as far as Alliance Wars go, I'm, I'm not sure if really your main goal is to keep those buffs alive. Sometimes they do fall in place together where it just makes sense. But uh, most of the time, I, I really wouldn't worry about it. 
Um, you'll find yourself probably getting into trouble more often than not if you're really trying to push to keep those things alive. Secondly, and more importantly, uh, the S1 does a life steal and then a regen for rogue. So 100% of the life you steal from the enemy uh, is turned into a regen. And you can see for my character that is at 680, but that can be boosted up by a couple of different things. Um, first and most obviously is if she is awakened, I'll scroll up here, her signature ability. Uh, there's a 17% chance at level 4 that that lifesteal is going to crit. Let's say I did a lifesteal and I'm supposed to get 1,000 regen back, 1,000 health back. Uh, if that crits, that's going to be 2,000. There's a couple of other things that affect that. Synergies, depending upon what you're running, uh, the mutants have got a couple of synergies that boost up their special attack damage. Uh, that seems to also boost up the healing that you get back. The other thing that seems to affect the amount of health you get back is the recovery mastery in the defense tree, which I have three points there, but that increases all regen that you gain during a fight by 15%. So that actually will affect the S1 whether it crits or not. So. Do keep that in mind as well. You've got a couple different options between synergies and masteries to actually boost up the amount of health you're getting back. Her S2 functions in a very similar way to her S1, except that instead of being a life steal, it's actually a power steal. So for each hit, and there are three of them in the animations, uh, she steals 9% of the enemy power as her own. Uh, and it does a whole lot more damage than the S1 does. Uh, that really is probably, if you're topped off on health, you're going to be spamming your S2. And it's fairly easy to do that. I think because of the lack of damage she does with her S1, you kind of make up for that uh, by being able to spam the S2. Because if you use the S2, uh, you're going to, at the very least, you're going to gain back pretty much a bar of power from the power steal. And uh, so, you know, you've got one bar of power. It only takes one more to get back to the S2. So you can just keep using that kind of over and over again. I think as far as, you know, on the tier of champions that drain power, you know, when it comes to special events like the Rocket Raccoon fight, I've got a video of that. Uh, she's the, the, the power steal is just not that strong. Um, so I think for special case scenarios like that, you're better off running somebody who can power lock like Magic, Psylocke, or has a better drain like Vision. But as far as kind of the everyday normal fights go, uh, for most of the Alliance War fights, for Alliance questing, for Act 5 questing, uh, the S2 is very useful and very strong. Uh, you just kind of have to be aware of its of its usefulness and what situation that you're in. And then finally, I'll touch on the S3, uh, which you'll hardly ever use. Uh, it does uh, power steal 27% of the enemy's power, so that's not quite one full bar. Uh, and then it activates, or I should say replicates, uh, one one buff for each type that you stole. So if you stole you know, four Furies during the fight, it's only going to give you one Fury. But let's say you stole the Fury effect, an armor up effect, a uh, heal effect... Uh, at different times throughout the fight. When you use your S3, it's going to replicate all of those together for you. But again, the timer starts. It's only going to be active for as long as you're hitting the enemy. So to be totally honest with you, I mean, unless you're in the situation where you just have to, you know, you're in a, you, you've got three bars of power. You've pushed the enemy into three bars of power. You have to fire it off. That's really about the only situation you could use it in. Just because the actual power drain is not that great. I mean, 27% is the exact same as 9% with three hits from the S2, and those have a chance to crit. So when it comes to power drain, your S2 is by far the better choice. You can already replicate buffs with your S1, so I, I don't know. The S3, I don't see a whole lot of usefulness for. Um, if you've got uh, some better reasoning to use it, maybe I'd, I'd love to hear that. But as far as my testing goes, uh, the S1's what you're gonna spam, S2's what you're gonna spam, stay away from the S3. Uh, it's really not that useful. One of the main disappointments that I found in testing Rogue is that, kind of like Loki with his S1 where he steals buffs, there are just so many unique buffs that, that Rogue cannot steal that I feel like if they gave you know the ability to do that, it would give another layer of depth to the character. You know, For instance, if I could steal uh, Evasion from Nightcrawler or if I could steal Limbo from Magic, and while I hold those things, you know, they can't get them, you know, it may cause me to, to, to play differently, may cause me to be more aggressive. It's just another layer of gameplay that uh, and utility, really, that I think they could have brought to Rogue that they, I guess, decided not to do. I even found a lot of times in uh, Act Number 5, for whatever reason, a lot of the buffs, like even an armor up buff from Iron Man, for whatever reason, I couldn't steal. 
I, I don't know if that is the way it was intended, but uh, I don't know, just kind of a pain. They've, they've given her a unique ability, but kind of really limited it to just a couple of characters that you can actually use it on. Overall, I think that Rogue is a very strong character. You know, people have really been high on her since the uh, update 12.0 came out, and I think justifiably so. She's really good for uh, questing. I'm using her a lot in Act Number 5, Chapter Number 1 to complete that. Uh, her ability to control fights with her power, uh, power drain, power steal, and then also a very strong, reliable uh, regen that you can use at will. Uh, make her a, a really strong character. I'm not really necessarily using her in Alliance Questing just because I have a lot of other characters that I use there, uh, but she'd be a strong character for that. The one area I think she may take a small step back in in her own class uh, would be Alliance Wars, and I only say that because she doesn't have a real strong... Um, doesn't have a real strong burst damage. She's much more suited for longer fights, control fights, and in Alliance Wars, you've got very limited amount of windows that you can actually attack the enemy, and you've got to be able to do as much damage as possible, or you're going to be doing a lot of timeouts uh, within those fights. So, you know, within her own class, you've got X-23 and you've got Wolverine, both regen characters, both bleed characters. You know, X-23 gets crit buffs when the bleed immune characters are there, so... I think Wolverine and X-23 edge her out as far as Alliance Wars. I don't see a lot of people running her kind of at the higher end in their Alliance Wars, so that may also be a good indication there. But uh, I, I haven't done the testing for myself, but kind of taking a step back and looking at overall uh, the mutant class as far as characters to use there, I think that's probably one area where she falls back a little bit. And with that, I'm going to end this video. If you have questions, if you have you know more experience with Rogue you'd like to share it with the community, leave that down in the comment section below. Or you can uh, follow me over on Twitter, ask me questions there, share pictures. Uh, I leave kind of status updates as far as videos that are coming out and other things going on. Uh, I won't spam your inbox, but I will leave the link to my Twitter in the description, so make sure you go over there as well. As always, thank you so much for your continued support. It means a lot. Until I see you in the next video, have a great day.